Hey yo, welcome back. Happy Sunday. Assalamu alaikum. All praise be to Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are going to do one more video tonight from One Islam Productions. And the title of this video is Eight Types of People Will Never Enter the Hellfire. Um, I, I think we all have the basic understanding of how to not enter the hellfire, but um, any additional advice or different perspectives in that matter could most certainly be beneficial to all of us. So let's check this out and see what they have to say. Assalamu alaikum. Are you looking for a reliable source to learn more about Islam? Look no further. Our app, One Islam TV, is the perfect solution for you. Get access to a wide range of informative, and engaging content in Islam right at your fingertips. Download our app now and start your free trial. We all know as believers that being admitted to Jannah and saved from the hellfire is the goal of every Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ فَقَدْ فَازْ Whomsoever is saved from the hellfire and admitted to Jannah, that is the ultimate success. Allahumma ja'alna min ahli al-jannah, ya Rabbil Alameen. But as people of Ahl al-Sunnah wal-Jama'ah, we all know that if a believer committed a major sin, he or she must go to Jahannam and punished for that sin for a period of time only known to Allah Azza wa Jal unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have forgiven them but the aqeedah is you will be punished for the major sin you have committed if you did not repent before you die and some people would say you know what what's the big deal I will go to hell for a couple of days it's exactly what the Bani Israel said. No, 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 Habibi. We cannot afford to be in the hellfire for a fraction of a second. And keep in mind that one day in the sight of Allah, one day on the time of Akhirah is equal to 1,000 years of our time. So don't go, I will go for a day. Sometimes in this dunya, we cannot put our finger inside the oven for more than two seconds. And the fire of Jahannam is 70 times more stronger than the fire of the dunya. You know, that had me thinking is, uh, my understanding is that all Muslims uh, will go to heaven but those, as he was just saying, those who have committed major sins have not repented, have not done near enough good to outweigh the evil, um, then they will have to suffer in, in the same manner to it, you know, as a disbeliever at, for a certain amount of time, you know, to burn, um, to be in intense pain and uh, torture and agony and no doubt scared out of their mind the entire time. And that could be uh, for thousands of years, you know, and um, like he said, you know, perhaps there's a Muslim that thinks, oh, maybe just a day or two. Um, but I think that mentality, if you have that mentality, that that uh, that's a slippery slope. Um, and what if it is such a slippery slope that I don't know if this is possible. This is above my pay grade, but I'm just saying like you've gone downhill so bad that your sincerity is no longer uh, valid. I don't know if that's a possibility or not. Um, but then what if the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, um, his intercession, is that going to miss you, so to speak, you know, because um, that path that you chose to go down was such a slippery slope that um, all of a sudden, basically your entire life is nothing uh, but haram, and it's actually turning people away from Islam. Um, something to think about. Obviously, that would be, you know, kind of an extreme case, but um that mentality of having complacency like ah so what i'll burn in hell for a couple of days i'm gonna go get drunk and go sleep around and do this and do that that's uh that's dangerous that's uh <laughs> that is the mentality of a fool i can say that if anyone's thinking that now i'm not saying that obviously to offend you um, but that is a very foolish way to think and that is for sure a slippery slope okay let's get back into this and the fire of jahannam is 70 times more stronger than the fire of the dunya. 
So a person will go and be punished whatever sin he did and then at the end he will be permitted to Jannah. But there are people whom Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that they will never ever see Jahannam. Yani, they will enter the Jannah without Hisab, without even passing by Jahannam. So lend me your ears so we can beg Allah to make us among them. First, Tawheed. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم the hadith is متفق عليه Bukhari and Muslim. ما من أحد يشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمدا رسول الله and here's the shahid صدقا من قلبه إلا حرمه الله على النار رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said no one who testified that there's no ilah except Allah no God except Allah and that Muhammad peace be upon him is his messenger and then here's the most important part of the hadith صدقا من قلبه truthfully sincerely from the bottom of his heart he utters this statement Allah will make Jahannam Allah will make the hellfire prohibited for that person the the Jahannam becomes haram upon that guy many hadith I will mention one more you know I would liken that to um, never like a true Muslim, you know, a true Muslim that absolutely believes beyond any reasonable doubt uh, that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is uh, Allah's uh, final messenger and that there is, Allah is the one and the only God, period. You know, um, that's if you're holding on to that rope and you're maintaining that uh, maximum iman, then you should have nothing to fear because if you believe those things, then you would be uh, you know, uh, behaving to the best of your human ability as the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, would have. Um, you're reading the Quran, you're praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're doing all of the things you're supposed to be doing, you know, so that's like the base level um, guarantee, you know, that you're going to make it, um, you know, whether an intercession, <laughs> whether, whether that is part of, of, you know, the process that you're going to go through or not, um, I don't know, you know, it just depends on the person on how uh, righteous and how sincere they're going to uh, attempt to be every single day you know until that time comes so okay let's get back into this for that person the the jahannam becomes haram upon that guy many hadith i will mention one more rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said a person إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ حَرَّمَ عَلَى النَّارِ مَنْ قَالَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ يَبْتَغِي بِذَلِكَ وَجْهِ اللَّهِ Allah made hellfire haram for the person who say لا إله إلا الله sincerely. You see, none of them says just say لا إله إلا الله and, and, you know, and enjoy. <laughs> sincerely seeking the pleasure of Allah عز وجل. What does it mean? truthfully sincerely that means ya akhwan is not about just saying la ilaha illallah and saying muhammad rasulullah it's about living la ilaha illallah abiding by la ilaha illallah let me ask you a question did the people did the munafiq did the hypocrites say la ilaha illallah did they say la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah Yes, where are they? In the lowest level of the hellfire, fi darki al asfal min al nar, they said la ilaha illallah. Look at the importance of this statement. You say it sincerely, hellfire will become haram. You say it fakely, with nifaq, you are in the lowest level of the hellfire, lower than the non-believers, lower. This is how important is La ilaha illallah. Second, 
قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من اغتبرت قدماه في سبيل الله حرمه الله على النار whomsoever anyone whose feet are covered with dust in Allah's cause he will be forbidden to enter the hellfire what does that mean it means that anyone who went for jihad fi sabilillah our brothers and sisters in gaza they are in 24/7 jihad i beg allah to make this hadith apply to them whomsoever in another narration sa'a just a period of time he went and strived for the cause of allah azza wa jal hellfire will become haram upon that person third listen to this that's something that we all do قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من حافظ على الصلوات الخمس على وضوئها ومواقيتها وركوعها وسجودها يراها حقا لله عليه حرم على النار whoever is consistent on his five day five daily prayers does not only pray Jumu'ah five daily prayers and look at the conditions because everybody here said alhamdulillah that's me listen to the conditions habibi he perfects its wudu not the express one he perfects its wudu he pray them or she pray them on time on time when that window that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us and he perfects the ruku and the sujood stand up here one time and watch watch how some of us perform ruku' and sujood. You would think you're watching an exercise class. Yalla, yalla, yalla. Up and down, up and down. No perfection of ruku'. And he listened to what Rasulullah Sallallahu said, SubhanAllah. He said, وَرْكَعَ حَتَّى تَطْمَئِنَّ رَاكِعًا Make ruku' until you are at peace in ruku' and get up from ruku' until you are at peace in that qiyam, in that position. You are at peace. Not, we make ruku' and then we dive to sujood. The, the, the back is not straight yet. So this does not apply here. He perfects its ruku' and its sujood. What happens if we do that? And then look what he added. Yaraha, he believes that this salat is not just a favor. No, no, no. Yaraha haqqan, that Allah, this is a must upon me. I'm a Muslim, I have to pray. Muslim, don't pray, don't go together. They do not go together, they do not mix. So my brother, my sisters, if you are behind in your salat, wallahi, this is for you. I beg you for the sake of Allah, especially in these days, come back to Allah and master your salat. 26 years old, we buried yesterday. What makes, what, what makes you think that me and you are not next? Do you think he knew? He had plans. He was ambitious. He was an amazing young man. But Allah knows best. So don't ever be fooled by your age, by your health, by your wealth, anything. Talking about Salat Rasulullah Sallallahu Okay, yeah, so here we see again, um, it's it's um, avoiding complacency. It's about using uh, discipline. And that's what we see with um, the repetition of prayer as well, is it's easy to get lost like in this thought, like, well, I'm just not going to pray today. I just want to play video games and do this and that. So I'm not going to go out and commit a robbery or a murder or insult anyone or slander anyone. I'm just going to lay on the couch and play video games and... But that's where you know if you revert back to the the basic fundamentals of Islam, which again it's um, it's discipline, and even if you don't feel like praying and you don't feel like doing this, um, my recommendation would be to do it anyway, uh, because even if you're just taking a day off, you're not doing anything crazy, you're just laying around the house, you are wasting your time and your life. Uh, that is a fact, uh, because those things, let's say if you're playing video games, you're not necessarily doing anything bad but you're not really doing anything good you're not doing anything in the service of allah azawajal 
you're just um, existing and wasting time until you know your expiration date um, and that may be 70 years from now before you pass away it might be 80 depending on how old you are uh, but like I said <laughs> believe me when I tell you that time is gonna come much faster and the older you get the faster time goes I don't know why that is but um, I think a lot of the older people um, on this channel people closer to my age they can probably back me up on that statement you know so that's what it is. Uh, it's discipline. It's doing things that even though we don't feel like we're doing and um, I could liken this to kind of like a, a gym analogy. You'll see um, I've seen uh, many pro bodybuilders or people who just are in that realm and they often say that's one of the things with discipline is if you want to make gains in the gym, you have to keep going um, even when you don't feel like it. But even when you don't feel like it, often oftentimes when you get in there and you start you get that that little warm-up going you know you get a couple of sets in with the weights and then all of a sudden like you have a change of mentality and like there's days where that can become the best workout you've ever had but you were so close to not showing up you know and i feel that if that works like that for working out it most certainly must work that way uh for prayer you know i mean it just it seems logical to me um so yeah when you don't feel like uh doing something good and righteous that you're supposed to be doing you just got to do it anyway it's just my opinion okay let's get back into it but Allah knows best so don't ever be fooled by your age by your health by your wealth anything talking about Salat Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam this is something that all of us can do من حافظ على أربع ركعات قبل الظهر وأربع بعدها حرمه الله على النار Whomsoever consistently, not once a week, not once a year, consistently pray four rak'ah before duhr and four rak'ah after duhr, sunnah. We all know that there are four and two, right? These are the ones that mu'akkada. Here, this is specific, if you want this reward, this is four and four. You can pray them four together or two and two, and two and two. If this becomes a habit upon a Muslim or a Muslimah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the hellfire haram upon them. Three kinds of eyes, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He said three kinds of eyes, the hellfire will not touch them. One eye that guarded, it guards the others fi sabilillah. And the second eye, an eye that cried out of the fear of Allah azza wa jal. And the third eye, an eye that lowered its gaze from what Allah has prohibited. All these eyes are prohibited to see the hellfire. Allahumma ja'alna minhum ya rabbil alameen. Last one, and to me, wallahi, this is probably something that we can all improve in. Rasulullah is sitting with the Sahaba and he said this beautiful question. Should I tell you about the person whom he is prohibited, forbidden to enter the hellfire? Of course, Ya Rasulullah, you are the Rasul, you are the Nabi. Go ahead. To haram hellfire, to haram ala kul qareeb hayyin layyin sahl. The hellfire is forbidden upon everyone who's qareeb, near, accessible, polite, and easy to deal with. Qareeb. He's near. Yani, when you need him, he's right there. He's always there for you. When you want to uh, vent, she's there. Anytime you, you need something, he's accessible. You don't need 17 people to get to him or to her. Qareeb. Qareeb bin al-Qalb. He's close to the heart. When you see him, you smile. When you see him, you remember Allah Azza wa Jal. Qareeb. And the rest are all one common meaning easy to deal with easy to deal with there are some people wallahi you think hundred times before you talk to them there are some people you run the statement in your mind seven eight times before you say it because you are so worried how are they going to react this guy is not easy and not near at all you bumped his car. Wallahi, we're not leaving till the police comes. Ya akhi, there's nothing. No, Habibi, we're not leaving. Ya Ammi, it's 100 degrees, Ya akhi. How much do you want? No, police has to come. Ya akhi, 
he is asking for forgiveness. I forgive him? No way! Never forgive him. This is not qareeb. This is not easy. The other guys, alhamdulillah, everybody makes mistakes. Yalla, let's go. Let's go, ya akhi. Qareeb. Subhanallah. Look at this. Did you notice something? That the one who's forbidden from the hellfire, the reason is his interaction with people. Not he goes to hajj every year. Not he prays to hajj seven hours a day. Did you notice? Qareeb. He's easy with the people. Easy. Uh, Shaykh, uh, brother, uh, Allah, the debt you gave me, uh, things are tough. No problem, Habib. Inshallah, next month, it's okay. No big deal. The other guy, Wallahi, I'm taking you to court. This is not Qareeb. You know, you look forward to see this, this kind of person. You, you are at, at ease when you're in their company. Listen carefully. Amin ayyam. Look at this. Ma min. Rasulullah negated, deleted every other day. No days. No days. He did not say between brackets except Ramadan. No days. Righteous deeds are more beloved to Allah than the deeds, than the righteous deeds done in these days. The Sahaba's mind immediately went to jihad. Ya Rasulullah, not even jihad. He said, not even jihad. And if I do jihad in any other time other than those 10 days, it's not equal to reading a page of Quran in these days. So I made a scenario and listen to this scenario. Rasulullah gave one excuse, one person only, whom is his amal, his action is better than my two rak'ah in these days, than my Juma in these days, than my Qiyam in these days, than my $5 donation in these days. One guy only. Who's that guy? A person who left, sold his house, sold his car, sold everything and spent that all to go for jihad. And he never came back with a penny or himself. He died in jihad. That is the only guy that is better his amal is better than the amal done in these days. Yani, if this guy went to jihad, sold his house, sold everything, and went to jihad, and came back on the 29th of Dhul Qa'dah, yesterday, he came back yesterday, he came back with no arms, no legs, blind, deaf, but because he came back, my two rak'ah of sunnah that I'm about to pray is better than his jihad, because the condition says you don't come back. Allahu Akbar. Are you feeling the weight? So what's the plan? Fast all nine days. Yalla. Starting today, you missed it today, start tomorrow. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. If you cannot, pick two days. If you cannot, make sure you fast on the day of Arafah. Every Salat in the Masjid for the brothers. Try as much as you can. This is it. The brother we buried yesterday, he did not know that last 10 days of the Hijjah were actually his last 10 days of the Hijjah, right? So please, every single Amal Salih, remembering Allah day and night, constantly. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Charity, there are so many charities that they deduct daily. Participate, ya akhi. One of them is our masjid. Without you knowing, the money is going, you're giving... Okay, we got a little bit of time left. I just, uh, before it got too much further, I wanted to go back on a couple of parts. Uh, so when he was talking about uh, lowering your gaze, um, obviously, you know, that would mean uh, as men, you know, we don't need to be looking at women who are not our wives. Um, that much is clear because of the haram involved with it. You're going to, you're, you're, if you continue to do that, your mind is eventually going to go to, you know, impure thoughts um, and then a potentially impure action the longer that you let that go on. And I would argue that lowering your gaze could be used in other ways as well. So, for example, if you have a problem binge eating, um, when you go to the grocery store, it would be good to, and I don't say this, you know, to sound ridiculous, but to lower your gaze over where all the sweets and cakes and treats are and just completely avoid that altogether, you know, or if an alcoholic who is trying to stop is going to the store is just completely avoid any part of the store where there's alcohol. Don't even look at it. Don't even uh, get close enough for temptation. You know what I mean? And then um, I also wanted to touch on the part where he was talking about being um, easy to deal with. Um, and just, uh, you know, like the example of getting in the car wreck and then the other person is, um, they want to make it as prolonged and as miserable as possible. Like vengeance is on their mind at all times, you know, and um, I have no doubt that uh, all of you have probably run into someone, someone like that 
uh, to varying degrees. I've run into a few people like that uh, who were behave like that on a very high degree. Um, and you, it's it's hard to even talk to them because, as that he said, you know, you you go over what you're going to say to them eight times, ten times before you even start communicating with them because anything that you say that falls out of like the exact specific way that they want to communicate, they're going to start complaining or cause a problem. And I, I trust me, <laughs> I've dealt with someone like this uh, for years at one point um, and it's exhausting. Um, you do everything you can eventually to just avoid that person because it's everything you say, anything you do, no matter your intentions, no matter the evidence of the good that you've done that you bring forward, it's always going to be a problem for that person. And I just, it's like they're cursed almost. It's like they can't get out of that mentality. I've had to speak to people about that before. I'm a bit uncomfortable and they do not seem receptive. You know, you're not trying to hurt their ego or hurt their feelings, but you know, you're trying to tell them rationally, like we, we can't go on like this. We can't do business like this. We can't be friends. We can't work together like this. Like you're just out of control. Like everything is, is such a problem. It's so dramatic at all times. You know, it's like, <laughs> this is just unreasonable. It just it is truly unreasonable, you know, but, um, it's just in some people to behave like that. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to, uh, touch on those before we got too much further. Let me go back just a bit here. Allah, day and night, constantly. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Charity. There are so many charities that they deduct daily. Participate, ya akhi. One of them is our masjid. Without you knowing, the money is going. You're giving charity every single day. Tahajjud. Smiling. In your brother's face. Any amal salih. Any amal salih. Anything. Come to Fajr in Jama'ah. Attend Fajr in congregation. Stay till shuruq. Stay till the sun rises. Wait 10, 15 minutes and pray two rak'ah. What is that equal to, Ya Rasulullah? He said, this is equal to Hajj and Umrah. You, we, were, we were deprived of going to Hajj this year. You can get nine Hajj from now till the Eid. Yalla ya shabab. What are we waiting for? This is my last time attending the Hijjah. Be good to your parents. Treat them with utmost respect. Be good to your neighbor. Any, any time, of, visit the sick. Run if you hear there's a janazah. Any time, any good deed is better than any other good deed in any other day. Wallahi, what a, what a blessing that Allah kept us alive to witness these days. Please take advantage of every single moment. Introducing the top rated Islamic app in the world, One Islam TV. The app offers a smooth, immersive okay it looks like it's it for that one uh that was definitely beneficial um a lot of that we have covered um from everything that we've learned so far um you know and i, I just i agreed with everything they said <laughs> it just it seems uh you know pretty obvious about what's going on and um i just want to go back one more time to um lowering our gaze you know there's there's so many temptations in this world you know and like if you're watching the television and uh you know like haram music comes on and um you know like i guess lowering your gaze in that regard would be um you know to hit the mute button and not look or just simply change the channel or turn it off and the more i think about it um lowering your gaze or the concept of that can probably be used in in so many ways that make sense you know to avoid that temptation because when we don't look away when we don't turn our ears off, so to speak, and we just allow it, you know, even if in our, our mind and our body, we're like we're fighting it, you know, for a little bit, but the more adjusted to it you become and the more that you allow it, you know, there's that more potential for corruption of your soul, you know, for to let those whispers in and then, you know, it's a slippery slope and then you start to try to rationalize, well, it's not that bad, you know, I mean, I'm only going to do this and do that. It's not really that big a deal. Nobody's going to know. And then all those thoughts start going through your head, you know. Um, slippery slope that's something to remember that is a real thing and uh I, i've been on the slippery slope myself and i've seen many people go down that road and uh they don't come back so it's uh, it's out there 
But uh, yeah, that was really good. Um, I'm going to be back within the next two to three days. We're probably going to be pretty busy at work um, up until the Christmas holiday in the United States. Um, yeah, probably most Western countries is uh, uh, for the Christmas holiday. Most businesses, they close down for a week. You know, all the schools, uh, minimal manning, you know, uh, so in preparation for that so that our company um, can do the same thing for all the employees. Uh, we're going to be very busy making sure that we get uh, caught up on everything. And, uh, you know, it's <laughs> I don't I don't like mean to smile too much or laugh when I say this, but I'm looking forward to the Christmas vacation so that I can make Islamic videos and read the Quran. I guess that's kind of like a weird statement or sentence to make, you know, but um, like I've been telling you guys, you know, for like 20 years, I I don't really care for the holidays and more specifically Christmas. Um, I've, you know, I've been saying it is it it takes away from the meaning of Christmas because all it is is, you know, like neighbors getting in competitions to see who can have like the most uh, magnificent uh, Christmas light set up in their front yard, who can buy the most and biggest presents for their kids to make other families or kids jealous or whatever. I'm not saying that that happens all the time, but I've certainly seen it. And um, to a degree, that's part of the culture, you know, and it's just uh, it's basically just a big money making scheme from stores for uh, <laughs> for the most part. You know, I'm not saying that to upset any Christians on here, you know, like true Christians. I know that, uh, you know, you're trying to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ and and so forth and all of that. But um, I think most of us can can see what it has turned into. Um, in this country and it's basically um, just it gets a bit uh, ridiculous you know so for me I'll be focusing on um, the only aspect that I care about of that and that is to spend time with my family um, and then a huge bonus to that is there's there's usually good food around everywhere good conversation get to see people I haven't seen in a long time um, so I'm looking forward to that I'll still be on call but um, I should have roughly nine days off in a row technically i'll probably be on the phone with work stuff uh, a few times if i had to guess but uh we'll see uh my plan is yeah like i said visit family eat good food read the quran and uh make some videos you know so that will be coming but uh yeah i'll try to be back um by tuesday or wednesday i'm just gonna see what happens but inshallah it's uh, sooner than later all right guys i'll see y'all